light is streaming, now is the darkness vanished away. See in this space our days and our dreamings, brought here to you in the light of this day. Gather us in the lots of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of God's Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. As we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries, we call to mind the grace and mercy that gathers us in. And we humble ourselves. I confess to Almighty, Almighty God, God and, and to you, my brothers, brothers and, sisters, and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I've done and in what I've failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, Bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
Let us pray. O God, from whom all good things come, grant that we who call on you in our need may at your prompting discern what is right and by your guidance do it. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord God called to the man after he had eaten of the tree, Where are you? he asked. I heard the sound of you in the garden, he replied. I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. Who told you that you were naked, he asked. Have you been eating of the tree I forbade you to eat? The man replied, It was the woman you put with me. She gave me the fruit. And I ate it. Then the Lord God asked the woman, What is this you have done? The woman replied, The serpent tempted me, and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, be accursed beyond all cattle, all wild beasts. You shall crawl on your belly and eat dust every day of your life. I'll make you enemies of each other, you and the woman, your offspring and her offspring. It will crush your head and you will strike its heel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Redemption and 
He will redeem Israel from all their iniquities. Bring the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. As we have the same spirit of faith that is mentioned in Scripture, I believed and therefore I spoke, we too believe and therefore we too speak, knowing that he who raised the Lord Jesus to life will raise us with Jesus in our turn and put us by his side and you with us. You see, all this is for your benefit, so that the more grace is multiplied among people, the more thanksgiving there will be to the glory of God. That is why there is no weakening on our part, and instead, though this outer man of ours may be falling into decay, the inner man is renewed day by day. Yes, the troubles which are soon over, though they weigh little, train us for the carrying of a weight of eternal glory which is out of all proportion to them. And so we have no eyes for things that are visible but only for things that are invisible. For visible things last only for a time, and the invisible things are eternal. For we know that when the tent that we live in on earth is folded up, there is a house built by God for us, an everlasting home not made by human hands in the heavens. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. This proclamation taken from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went home with his disciples, and such a crowd collected that they could not even have a meal. When his relatives heard of this, they set out to take charge of him, convinced he was out of his mind. The scribes who had come down from Jerusalem were saying, Beelzebul is in him, and it is through the prince of devils that he casts devils out. So he called them to him and spoke to them in parables. How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, the kingdom cannot last. And if a household is divided against itself, that household can never stand. 
Now if Satan has rebelled against himself and is divided, he cannot stand either. It is the end of him. But no one can make his way into a strong man's house and burgle his property unless he has tied up the strong man first. Only then can he burgle his house. I tell you solemnly, all men's sins will be forgiven and all their blasphemies. But let anyone blaspheme against the Holy Spirit and he will never have forgiveness. He is guilty of an eternal sin. This was because they were saying an unclean spirit is in him. His mother and brothers now arrived and standing outside sent in a message asking for him. A crowd was sitting around him at the time the message was passed to him. Your mother and brothers and sisters are outside asking for you. He replied, Who are my mother and my brothers? And looking round at those sitting in a circle about him, he said, Here is my mother and my brothers. Anyone who does the will of God, that person is my brother and sister and mother. The good news, the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. There seems to be a lot going on in our scripture readings today. Sin, disenchantment, paradise loss, blame games. The woman whom you put there, she gave me the fruit. So I ate it. You put there. It's not my fault. Eve does no better. Accepting responsibility for her. It's the serpent's fault. The serpent tricked me into it, so I ate it. Then in the gospel, we seem to have strange things about home, the devil, sinning against the Holy Spirit. So much is going on. It's much like this picture. So much is going on. Someone sent me this picture, and I was looking at it. It's probably AI-generated. And because so much was going on there, it took me a while before I saw a a bearded man. Let's see whether you can see the bearded man. You see three eagles, or you see a man? Okay, we can stay here for seven minutes and then it's over, the homely. Thank you. If we stay a bit with the scriptures, perhaps just as it took time for that bearded man to emerge, maybe it happened very fast for you. We might notice a golden thread that weaves through and emerges. And that is that God comes to heal, to save us, to bring us into a relationship With him, he comes to bring us home. St. Mark tells us in today's gospel that Jesus came home with his disciples. Now, which home is he coming to? What does St. Mark mean by home? It reminds me of Kitchen's song, right? The one that we all love, Home. Whenever I'm feeling low, okay, I can't do the fry, Derek. Whenever I am feeling low, I look around me and I know. You know that one? There's a place that will stay within me. Wherever I may choose to go, I'll always recall the city. And of course, then that famous chorus, this is home truly, where I know I must be where my dreams wait for me, 
where the river always flow. Mark tells us that Jesus came home. The crowd gathered together. Mark is very fond of that word, home. This crowd is the same crowd that gathered by the sea earlier in the chapter. It looks like home is where Jesus always gathers his disciples. And it's composed of inquisitive neighbors, curious locals. They're drawn from Galilee, from Judea. They're not just pious, respectable Jews. They're also people who are non-Jews, the Gentiles. They were a mixed bag. Sounds like us. And as he gathers them, he's beginning to construct his understanding of the kingdom, of this newness, of what home must be with God. This temple, the temple of his body, of his person. And while he's doing that, the scribes that represent the chosen choose not to enter that home. They find that his work is demonic. And so that Greek word, diabolos, is kind of informative on what is happening. As he is creating this identity of home with him, Reversing the curse of Genesis, Diabolos is the one who divides and scatters, because that's what the word means. He pits one person against the other. He pulls things apart. He tears things down. And it's saying that Jesus is Diabolos. Now, do these actions characterize the mission of Jesus? Not at all. He doesn't seem to be a divider. He seems to be the one who is calling into home. He welcomes the leper, the sinner. He challenges those who hear him to collaborate in building the kingdom of God. His work is not about division, but about unity. It's no wonder the papal theme is unity and hope. Not about pulling things apart, but about welcoming people in. Sounds interesting, isn't it? Seems to be what Pope Francis is focusing on. And yet, there are many people who also say he's tearing it apart, diabolos. As his disciples today, we should recognize that this mission of pulling together is the will of God for us. That is why when members of our family turn against one another, or friends begin to, t begin to tear one another down, apart, we know in our hearts that this is not the will of God. That is why when we see our parish polarize with different Groups not working together, hurling insults, demeaning one another. We know this is not the home that he's calling us into. Jesus is not about division and scattering. He's about bringing in. And so in that song, we realize that verse that says that Whenever there is trouble, then it is home that reminds us. I think it's in that second verse. We'll find a way to start a new. There is comfort in the knowledge that holds about people too. So we'll build our dreams together. Thank you. And there you have it. 
We'll find a way to start anew, and that is what is in that first reading, that he'll start anew, that he will now redeem. And we'll find a way to bring together, because this will then be home. You see, our, the great symbol of our Catholic tradition is the Eucharist that we celebrated last Sunday with Corpus Christi, the banquet of the Lord. Here we gather, here we sing together, here we hear the word of God as one community. We extend peace to one another. Here together we receive the body and blood of the Lord. The Eucharist then is our symbol of being at home, a symbol of unity. And the Greek word for it is symbolon, the opposite of diabolos. Diabolos means to divide. Symbolon means pulling together. So as we stand here at this symbol of our unity at home, let us commit ourselves to be people who pull things together, who work across divisions for unity, who build things up rather than tear things down. Such an attitude would show us to be disciples of Jesus. But the good news is that we won't just be disciples. We would be brother, sister, mother, we would be so intimately bound with him. Of course, this demands that we acknowledge our sin. And this is what St. Paul is saying, that this home that he's building demands that we stop blame games, that we admit that we do require the Lord's grace and mercy. Well, that's where the problem starts, isn't it? I want it all, but I don't want to admit blame. But when I do, and when I acknowledge that this is where his grace and mercy calls me, then it's wonderful. But when I don't, when I don't think I need anything, that he cannot bring anything to me, then this would be the blasphemy of God, the blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. God won't force forgiveness on us, but he invites us back home. So let us then, as people gathered round at home, where he is teaching us, let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. With confidence in the knowledge of God's love for us, we offer up our prayers and our needs and that of the world. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For Pope Francis's visit in September to Singapore and the neighboring countries, that it will renew our faith to be a church that is welcoming inclusive and compassionate. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all in positions of authority in the world, that they seek the common good of all peoples through their efforts in social and economic justice. 
We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For the 50 students attending St. Mary's Sec 3 Confirmation Retreat this weekend, that they be open to and grow in their desire to know and follow Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and suffering, that they find peace and comfort in the merciful heart of Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For the community of St. Mary of the Angels, that we be humble and patient and love and serve others as Christ did. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. God our Father, strengthen us with faith in your love, that we may always know and do your will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So pray, my brothers and sisters, pray that your offering, your sacrifice, will be united with mine. Become one sacrifice of praise, acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look kindly upon our service, O Lord, we pray, that what we offer may be an acceptable oblation to you and lead us to grow in charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Then let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right and just. It is truly right. It is just. It is our duty and our salvation. Always, everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. Through Christ, our Lord. For by his birth, he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state. And by his suffering, cancelled out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life. And by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus the Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more, giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence, minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, Bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, William, our Bishop, and all the clergy, remember our brothers, our sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, all who have died. In your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face and have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles, with St. Francis and St. Clair, with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life. May praise glorify you through your Son, Jesus the Christ, for it is through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may be free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace, peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sin, but look on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. So let us express that oneness that Christ intends for us. Acknowledge and offer to each other a sign of his peace. Peace be with you.
Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Bless, bless are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Jesus, I believe you are really here in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you more than anything in the world, and I hunger to receive you. But since I cannot receive communion at this time, feed my soul at least spiritually. I unite myself to you now, as I do when I actually receive you in Holy Communion. Amen. Let us pray. May your healing work, O Lord. Free us, we pray, from doing evil and lead us to do what is right through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, with your spirit. and may Almighty God bless you. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us go in peace, glorifying the Lord by our lives. Thanks be to God.
Strong by the ones he came to save Till on that cross as Jesus died The wrath of God was satisfied For every sin on he was laid Here in the death of Christ I live